this video, we're going to be looking at some of the earliest um, forays onto land of more complex organisms. So a key question really that we're, we're talking about is when do we start seeing complex multicellular life on land? Obviously, that's quite a loaded question because that really depends on your defini definition of complex. Cyanobacteria are very complex creatures. But what I really mean when I'm saying this is when do we start seeing a modern type ecosystems that comprise plants and animals appearing? Well, the early ev earliest evidence for life on land such as these um, occurs in the Phanerozoic, so quite a while after where we were in the last video. And for that reason, I'll be switching to the timeline that you can see on this slide here now. So this is our, our familiar Phanerozoic timeline. The first appearance of structures which we associate with early plants appears in the Ordovician, and then the fossil record really kicks in in the Silurian. The earliest evidence for more complex life on land is found in the form of land plant spores in the Ordovician. So we have more about this in the next slide, but it's shown nicely or sum summarized very nicely, both in terms of the reproductive structures we see in plants and in terms of the uh, structures that we actually see in fossils themselves in the fossil record in these two diagrams taken from a paper by Kenrick et al. in 2012. As you can see from the graph on the right here, um, we start seeing smooth tubes, kind of the simplest uh, form we may associate with a plant, appearing at about 461 million years ago in the fossil record. This reflects the fact that early fossils can be fragmentary and difficult to place in a modern tree of life. As we have seen in, for example, the animals in other contexts, we can talk about the kind of structures we see rather than actually placing them anywhere particularly uh, in the tree of life. And that's what this diagram actually really does. This is more about structures than it is about the uh, phylogenetic um, relationships of these organisms. In comparison to these, these bits of plants, in terms of land plant spores, we actually have a really excellent fossil record. These are structures that are produced in prodigious numbers and they can be transported for vast distances into a variety of different sedimentary environments. Those, those don't even have to be particularly close to land. So um, they can be carried on uh, the wind, they can be carried in ocean currents, and we can find them in many, many different areas. And they also have very high fossilization potential because they uh, possess a really um, kind of hard, what we would say recalcitrant um, wall made of a thing called sporopollenin. So it just it's really difficult to uh, make it decay. Key question in our timeline is where do we find the first compelling evidence in the fossil record for land plants? So these once more come in the form of macerated uh, fossils, such as the ones that we met with the Nonsuch Shale, and some of these are shown here. The earliest dispersed spores that we find in the fossil record appear in the Middle Ordovician around 475 million years ago. They're normally called cryptospores because they exhibit, exhibit unusual configurations. There are a number of lines of evidence in combination um, which all suggest that cryptospores are derived from land plants, but we don't know exactly what land plants those are. There's a really good overview of this in this Kenrick et al. paper in 2012. If I take us back to our timeline, um, what this essentially shows us is that land plants started as small non-vascular mosses and liverworts. So these are members of a group called the bryophytes but we have really no fossil record of these due to their preser poor preservation potential and indeed our fossil sampling. A major change in dispersed spore, uh, spore assemblages occurs in the early Silurian period, which you can see here on this diagram. <coughs> this may well equate to the origin of vascular plants. So this is a group of plants that's also known as the tracheophytes. The name doesn't really matter. Um, or sometimes it's called the higher plants. But basically that's a large group of plants that are defined as those land plants that have lignified tissue, tissues such as the xylem for conducting water and minerals throughout the plant. So we think this change in the early Silurian represents the origin of this group, the vascular plants. Indeed, in the plant body fossil record, vascular plants, so that's the tracheophytes, the club mosses, ferns, horsetails, and seed plants, are 
far more commonly represented than are the bryophytes, that's the liverworts, hornworts and mosses. So we know that there is a bias at play here. But with that said, let's move on to the first fossil plant. So the first plant fossils of, of kind of like whole organisms that we can identify as being plants appear in the Silurian. These are small, they're frequently preserved as impressions um, comprising carbonized films in which little or no internal structure is preserved. The oldest generally accepted record of a land plant body fossil is a thing called Quixonia. This is from the Silurian. Um, it's about 425 million years in age. You can see some examples of Cooksonia fossils on this slide here. Um, Cooksonia is shown as a fossil on the left here and is reconstructed on the right here. This is a leafless branched plant body with sporangia at the end of each branch tip. So it was a maximum of 6.5 centimeters tall and it lived in swampy areas, we think. It could be that Cooksonia, this genus, is paraphyletic or possibly polyphyletic. So fossils assigned to this genus are most probably members of a wide range of vascular plants. A number of fossils appeared shortly after this particular genus with similar complexity. And then we see um, plant fossils getting increasingly big as the Silurian progressed. So that's a quick insight into the earliest um, plants that we know of from the fossil record and indeed to plant terrestrialization as a whole. In the next video, we're going to be moving on to how arthropods came, on, came to land. But if you scroll downwards, if you're interested in plants and their terrestrialization at the bottom of this web page, I've put in a link um, to some bonus materials that will cover plant terrestrialization, which you may find quite interesting. So I'll see you shortly in the next video.